Hello language learners, this video is for people who have really busy schedules but still want to learn a new language. I'll be sharing an awesome hack I've been using to take a whole bunch of vocabulary words and turn them into flashcards instantly that also subdivide themselves into groups that take less than one minute to study. This is awesome for fitting learning vocabulary into a busy lifestyle and ensures that you'll continue improving your language even as things get busy in your life. Entonces, vamos al lío. Hello language lovers and welcome to my channel. My name is Jerry and this channel is for anyone interested in learning Spanish or just interested in language learning in general. I've had a ton of fun learning Spanish this past year and I don't plan to stop anytime soon. Each week in this channel, I will share the tips, the experiences, and the practical stuff that I find that are making the language learning experience fun and effective for me with the hopes that it will arm you with the tools and strategies to do the same for yourselves. Now in today's video, I'll share with you a super cool trick that's made it very easy for me to fit learning vocabulary into my day no matter how busy it gets. This trick takes a whole bunch of vocabulary words and subdivides them for you into small groups that you can study in just a couple of seconds and it's really easy to fit this into your day. This makes it easy to fit learning vocabulary into the little pockets of free time that pop up in the day. Like when you're waiting in line at the grocery store or you're waiting for something to heat up in the microwave, you can take out your phone and in just under a minute, learn a couple of new words and get back to your life. You'll be able to turn a whole bunch of empty moments into a fun language review. And we'll be doing this using only free tools, Google Translate, Quizlet, and a couple others. I'll first share why this flashcard hack is so useful, and then I'll dive in and actually show you how to set it up for yourselves. By the end of this video, you should have all the knowledge you need to set it up and get on your way. Pongamos manos a la obra y empecemos. Okay, super quick backstory before I dive in. When I first got to Spain to start my study abroad program last January, I came in with a lot of the basic Spanish structures down pat already. So you can imagine my surprise trying to talk to some of the first friends that I met and absolutely flailing at having the most basic conversations. I quickly realized that I had a lot of the basic sentence structures, but I was missing the things that you fill those with, vocabulary. So when it came time to actually express my ideas and use what I knew, yeah, not great. Here's some very authentically authentic footage of what my first day at uni looked like. Oye, eres el nuevo de la clase, ¿no? Del intercambio. Qué bien. Pues bienvenido, tío. Un gusto que estés aquí. Y encima me han dicho que eres de Nueva York. Qué guay, ¿no? Siempre he querido meterme ahí unos meses. Pues, dinos algo de Nueva York. ¿Cómo está la ciudad? Uh, es que soy, soy de Nueva York. Sí, es una buena ciudad. I quickly realized two glaring problems with having a lack of vocabulary. First, I couldn't describe things as precisely as I wanted. And second, I knew maybe one word to represent each idea. So if I spoke long enough, I kept repeating the same words on loop. Instead of being stuck saying that New York City was... Good. I really was trying to express that the city was vibrante, animada, ruidosa, apresurada. These are the words that I wanted to use. Words that are more precise, have more color, and a lot more personality. Without ample vocabulary, I felt like I couldn't express my personality and actually felt really caged for quite a while. So to break free, I quickly turned to vocabulary that would allow me to get more and more of my own personality out. I tried a whole bunch of vocab study techniques which were nice, but quickly fell apart when I came back to the US to a life as a busy college student, working on the side and launching my own projects. That's why I was super excited to finally find a method that fits into a busy schedule and I'm super excited to share it with you. Okay, backstory over, let's show you what it looks like and then how to set it up. Okay, so here's what my setup looked like when I finished it. So these are three decks that I just made. Fair warning, yep, there's a lot of cards. But our intent is less to finish all these cards and more to have a continuous set of rich vocabulary that we like and to continue to learn from. I'll open this up, look at a card, think about the answer, say it, flip a card, and then move on. And you can see how quick this goes by. So I'll flip through a couple of cards in literally less than a minute. And then if I'm still waiting, I might do another round or another few rounds. And it's really powerful that Quizlet splits up your flashcards for you automatically because it makes each round super quick. And this then fits great into the random two minutes you have between Zoom meetings, classes, or waiting for a download. It's a great thing to fill in dead time. Waiting for your computer to load, do one round. Popcorn taking two minutes in the microwave, do two, three rounds. Waiting in line at the groceries, do another two or three rounds. Now the way I set mine up, sometimes it alternates between Spanish or English first. Sometimes it has both the Spanish and the English on the same card. I'm putting the emphasis on just seeing the vocab in the first place and not necessarily how I see it because I find that that still works for me just to have less upkeep. But I'll show you how to customize all these options too. All right, let's dive into the setup. So the first step is to just find words that you like and you want to actually learn and save them in Google Translate. 
These can be words from shows, from conversations, from news articles, music, or whatever it is. I usually have my phone or laptop with me walking around, and if I hear a word that I like, I'll find a free moment, save the word, star it, and move on with my day. So let's say you just heard the word campania and you wanted to remember it and study it. I would add it in, and then just save it. Now here's a cool trick. Some words will actually let you select the definition that you like. So if a definition doesn't seem to fit the way you, you hear the word being used, you can go ahead and click on it and change it, and then save that one instead. After running through this process with all the words that you encounter, you'll be able to find all the words that you save here. Now I definitely have a lot, but I started this in January of 2020, so it's been about a year for me. If anyone has more than this, please share that in the comments. I'd love to find out. Now step two is to export this list from Google Translate. So to do that, you just go over here and click Export to Google Sheets. It asks you if you want to import the document and just click yes, import the data. Now the next step is to import this into Quizlet. For that, you're just going to want to take these two columns and you can only do up to 2000 at a time. So that's only a problem if you have a lot of words. So let's just test this with 30 words. Take these first 30 and you'll just copy that. Then you can head to Quizlet. You'll go ahead and click create. Give it a title, I'll name this one set one, a description if you want to, I'll skip it for now, and then you'll click import, and all you have to do now is paste it in, and it gives you here a preview of the cards it's about to make for you, so you can take a quick look, and it looks good, so then you just click import. And finally, just click Create. Now, it sometimes asks you to choose the language. So just choose, it's usually going to be Spanish to English. And some of mine are actually English to Spanish. But again, that's less important to me. And I'm just focusing on seeing the word. So, so that's OK, too. Once you select the language, you just click Create. Then the set is ready. And now you can just click Study to learn. I usually go here and just select these two options and take out the written answer because I have some really long phrases that I don't necessarily want to type out. But if all of yours are single words, maybe you can keep it on. And if you download the app, this set that you just created will be on your phone too. So you can study it there as well. And the rounds just go by really, really quick. So again, this is awesome for just squeezing into your day. Okay, now that you have your flashcards all set up, the fourth step is to make your flashcards more natural. So if you didn't like the translations that Google gave you, which sometimes aren't the best, then here's what you can do. I think that Google will get this phrase wrong. Okay, in Sevilla, this phrase would really translate to something that makes you mad. But in other dialects, this translation actually checks out. So if we don't like what Google gives us, and we can't change it here, what I do is visit two backup sites. The first is Reverso Context. And let's try it here. You can see that here, we get translations that do check out right here. So the first option I'll take is either just change it right here. And then save it. And then when you export it to Quizlet, you'll have both the English and the Spanish on the same side. But I think the important piece is just seeing the words and phrases. If you don't like having both of them on the same side, though, the other thing that you can do is to edit in Quizlet itself. You can go to your cards. and then edit the set manually. So you could change the definition here if you didn't like it. Maybe you don't like this definition, you want to actually save it as this one. And you can also add another card. And then you just save it. Now, if you're taking the Quizlet route and you have a ton of cards, I would change them one by one as I come across the words that I want, want to change instead of all at the same time to split up the work. And also changing the vocabulary gets you to spend more time with it. And the last site I wanted to show you was Lingui. Gives you examples of the words and phrases that you type in in written context 
by looking at a whole bunch of external sources and giving you the words in a lot better context. There's a lot of words and phrases that have tend to have multiple meanings and definitions in different places or uses that were older or newer. And so these two sites are great for giving you that extra bit of context when you don't like the definition that you get from Google Translate. Another way to employ these two sites into your studying is as you're reviewing a flashcard, if one seems a little off to you, go and look it up in one of these two sites and see if you find a definition that makes more sense. And finally, step five, have fun studying the vocabulary. Because these are super quick, you can give yourself a fun challenge, like doing five or 10 every day. And even if you forget to do them throughout the day, you can squeeze them in right before you go to bed because it takes less than a minute for each round. And there you have it, an awesome method to fit learning vocabulary into the pockets of free time that open up during the day, even if you're on a really busy schedule. This was super helpful to me as a full-time student, working with projects going on, and I hope it'll be helpful to you too. Now, if you have requests for any other topics, please feel free to share in the comments below and take this strategy and go make yourself some flashcards. Maybe you already have a bunch of words and phrases saved into Google Translate. And comment, how many phrases have you saved already? Am I crazy for having almost 7,000 phrases or is someone out there pushing some crazy number? Subscribe for more tips, experiences, and language resources, and we'll see you next week. Sending good vibes and energy your way, and hasta la próxima.